Okay. Hello everyone. So I'm a PhD student at University of Trieste and I would like to speak about measurement in quantum mechanics. So what is measurement? Uh, measurement is the final step in a general scientific experiment. So we know uh, in general, we can set up a scientific experiment with some initial conditions. So you can imagine holding a ball in your hand at a certain height from the floor and the exact value of the height would come would basically make up the initial conditions of the experiment. The second step is to let the experiment run, which in this case would be to let the ball fall. And then in the final step, we would take the measurement, we will do the measurement, which in this case could be uh, to observe the velocity with which the ball hits the floor, right? So in everyday physics experiments, or to be more precise, uh, the experiments uh, which can be described by Newton's laws of physics, the measurements offer does not offer any special problems. Uh, but in the case of quantum mechanics, as we will see, it offers uh, conceptual difficulties, which even to this date are uh, debated actively uh, in the scientific community. So to begin, uh, we look at a very simple experiment. So on the very left, we have a gun which shoots bullets. The bullets pass through a wall with two holes and are collected on the very right on the detector screen. And what we are interested in measuring is the distribution of the bullets on the detector screen. So for example, we would like to see how many, the number of bullets that are collected at a given location on the detector screen, right? Uh, we can set up the experiment in such a way that the probability of the bullet passing through the top hole and the bottom hole is the same. So this can be easily done by having the gun right in between the two holes and also having a gun which sprays the bullets uniformly in all directions, right? And also we shoot the bullet bullets one at a time. So we shoot a bullet, wait for it to hit the detector screen and only then fire the next bullet. So you may say that since we are firing bullets one at a time, it either passes through the top hole or the bottom hole. So if in this experiment, a total number of 100 bullets are fired, the experiment which gives the same outcome as if we first fired 50 bullets only through the top hole, in which case you will see that the maximum number of bullets are collected near the top hole. The second experiment in which 50 bullets are fired only through the bottom hole, in which maximum number of bullets would be collected near the bottom hole. And then if we simply add the bullet counts uh, received in the two experiments, we would get a pattern like this. So now maximum number of bullets are collected in between the two holes uh, if uh, the holes happen to be close enough. And to see why the maximum number of bullets would now be towards the center, uh, it's basically because the bullet counts from the bottom hole and the top hole uh, add on to each other in between the two holes, which therefore shifts the location of the maxima of the distribution in between the two holes uh, as compared to the previous two experiments. So this is what you would get if you fire, let's say, n number of bullets uh, passing through a wall with two holes, uh, with the bullets being collected on the detector screen. Just a broad peak in between the two holes, with the number of bullets, uh, with the number of bullets decreasing as you move further away from the center of the screen on either side. Now we do the same experiment with waves. So you, you will place, we basically replace the uh, bullet gun with a wave generator. And this wave can be anything. It can be a water wave or the sound wave. The nature of the wave is not so important. The wave again passes through the, a wall with two holes and hits the detector screen. And in this case, what the detector measures is the energy that is delivered by the, ray, uh, by the waves. Okay, so we measure the intensity of the wave with which it hits the detector screen. And one might expect uh, the pattern to be different than what we saw for the bullets, because unlike the bullets, the waves are delocalized in space. So you cannot think of the wave just passing through the bottom hole or the top hole one at a time. It passes through both the holes simultaneously, right? So waves are delocalized in space and wave passing through the bottom hole can interfere with the one passing through the top hole leading to a very different pattern on the screen. And what I mean by interference is, imagine that a source emits two waves, uh, the bottom wave being emitted slightly earlier than the top wave. 
So for instance, if the top wave was emitted at t equals to 10 seconds, one can imagine that the bottom wave was emitted at t equals to five seconds. And now if you add the two waves together, so if I place the bottom wave on top of the top wave, you will see that the positive displacement of the top wave is completely canceled out by the negative displacement of the, uh, of the bottom wave, leading to zero displacement when you add the two waves together. And since the detector screen is sensitive to the intensity of the wave, which mathematically speaking is related to the square of the displa displacement of the net wave, there will be points on the detector screen where you record zero intensity. Okay. So at certain points on the detector, the waves coming from different holes can align in such a way that no energy is delivered. And this gives rise to the interference pattern. So the pattern would look something like this. So now we are plot now, now what we are plotting on the detector screen is the intensity with which the wave hits the screen. So you can see that at position zero, you have the maximum intensity of the wave. Then in between zero and one, let's call it 0 0.5. There is a point where no wave uh, the intensity of the wave is zero. Then again, you have a local maxima at one and minus one. And similarly, between one and two, there is a point where there is zero intensity. And again, there is a local maxima at plus two and minus two. And to just run through the argument again, why there can be some points, let's say, for example, 1.5, where the intensity of the wave is zero. This is because you can see that the point 1.5 is closer to the top hole than it is to the bottom hole. So the wave which is coming from the bottom hole must have left a bit earlier than the wave coming from the top hole if it has to hit this point at the same time. And by the mechanism we saw before, this can lead to a perfect cancellation of the wave and therefore zero intensity being recorded at this point. So just to recap, just to recap we did the experiment twice, once with waves in which we saw this pattern being recorded on the screen. And the previous experiment we did with bullets in which we just had a local peak uh, at, in the middle of the two holes and the number of bullets just gradually declined as we move further away on the screen. But there was no point like this, like 0 0.5 in the case of the bullets where you had zero number of bullets being recorded on the detector screen. This is a special characteristic of the waves because the number of counts, bullet counts coming from the bottom hole could only add to the bullet counts coming from the top hole, it cannot subtract, whereas the waves can uh, have destructive interference as we saw. Now we do the same experiment with electrons. So we replace the bullet gun with an electron gun. And it is an experimental fact that just like bullets, you can shoot electrons one at a time and you can detect electrons one at a time. So like the experiment with the bullets, we shoot one first one electron, wait, or wait for it to be detected on the detector screen, then shoot another electron. So one might imagine that, uh, uh, well, the pattern that we should see for electrons should be the same as the bullets because it either passes through the top hole or through the bottom hole. But actually, if we do the experiment, the pattern that we see is identical to what we saw for the waves. So now what we are plotting on the detector screen is the number of electrons recorded at different positions on the screen. So at again at position zero, let's say we can have 50 electrons. At position one and minus one, we can have 20 electrons each. And then at position two and minus two, we can have five each. Right? But this is quite strange because we just discussed that it's experimentally, it's an experimental fact that electrons can be shot like bullets and detected like bullets, but somehow they can lead to this interference pattern in which there are points on the screen where we see no electrons at all. And the only logical possibility left to explain this experimental result is to say that while electrons are shot and detected like bullets, like indestructible particles, in between they somehow behave like waves. And now we see why measurement in quantum mechanics, at least in this particular experiment, plays such a bizarre role because we are postulating or we are demanding that in order to explain this experiment, the wave nature of the electron changes drastically and suddenly at the time of the measurement to a bullet-like nature. So just before the measurement, the electron was perfectly delocalized as if it was a wave. So it, it was in a superposition of, let's say, five different outcomes. It could have been at position two and one and zero and minus one and minus two. But then when we actually do the measurement, we, measurement, we just see it at a definite point on the screen. 
So the difficulty is that the equation governing the dynamics of an electron, which is able to describe its wave-like nature, has no mechanism to kill this superposition of states and lead to a single outcome that we observe. So this is the measurement problem in quantum mechanics. And I would just like to conclude with uh, two open questions. So one might say that how do we resolve this difficulty? Well, the one of the obvious uh, strategy would be to try and modify the Schrodinger equation, because we just said that the equation in general does not have any mechanism which can lead from this superposition to a definite outcome that we see. So one can try to fiddle around with this equation, which is very difficult to do because as we know, it's a very successful equation which describes uh, almost all the experiment results that we have seen. But you may try to modify the Schrodinger equation in the sense that it does not change the dynamics of the electron until the time of measurement. So this would be one strategy. And the second strategy or the second view that people take is called the Manivals interpretation, whose central hypothesis is that the Schrodinger equation applies to the whole uh, universe at all times. And according to this interpretation, the way you basically deal with this uh, situation is you say that universe remains uh, at all times in a state of superposition of these five different branches, let's say. And it's only from the inside view of each of these branches that you can see a definite outcome within your branch. But the at all times, the universe obeys unitary dynamics with the with these five possible outcomes remaining in superposition. So I would say that uh, we still there is still no general consensus uh, of among the community of whether one should actually modify the Schrodinger equation to explain the measurement or one should just adapt the many worlds point of view in which uh, basically the subjective experience of having a having a definite outcome is given a lower status uh, compared to the validity of Schrodinger equation. Thank you. Anil, other questions, comments, or? Oh, yeah, well, yes, sir. Okay. What do you think about a person that at least there are many more, but I think one is considering that I think also an alternative to this two, which is uh -huh. the one of particles guided by waves. So, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, let's say first of all that I don't know too much about Bohmian mechanics to have an opinion. But uh, for me, if I do, if I take an economical point of view, I would, I would say that either one should uh, modify the Schrodinger equation to really say that at the time of the measurement you. Uh, have a definite outcome or simply adopt the many worlds interpretation because if you so maybe you can first uh, introduce me to the Bohmian like the central hypothesis of the Bohmian dynamics because I I, I don't oh, remember okay. exactly. No, that idea is that there uh -huh. are particles yes. that you live on the world uh -huh. and then uh, these are guided, guided by waves. So that is how they distribute in that interference pattern and not that. Uh -huh. So you you basically introduce a wave guide, let's say, in addition to the particle. So, yes, we are the particles uh -huh. and they are all the yarn. Uh -huh. And then they all of a function with most of the guide is uh, mm -hmm. particles along some funny trajectory, uh -huh. and they also not that's on the yarn. Okay, okay, so let's say I, I have not studied it so much to have a Sorry. okay. Should people really be concerned or are they really, that's quite a if people are concerned about this measurement product because of one let's just say in a mathematical approach, mm -hmm. you know how uh you know how to use the theory, you know, mm -hmm. to get the same experimental results that we have. Mm -hmm. And I would say that for many people, right? This the consensus is that you are satisfied already with that one, mm -hmm. whatever else uh, I mean, I would say that uh, one should always strive for a better understanding of the theory. So even if 
if we feel that for all practical purposes the theory is okay if we feel that there is a difficulty then it's always worth investigating i mean this is gen as i guess it's a matter of taste but i would say that from what we saw uh this needs to be explained at least if you uh, if you do not adopt manivel's interpretation then so either you are happy with the manivel's interpretation would which, which would be your point of view in some sense right so you don't care somehow uh about the about what it means to really have a definite outcome right I, I may add an observation on this, uh, namely uh, on what you said, which I think is very, very true. Mm -hmm. uh, and Duncan is an example. It was a nuisance mm -hmm. uh, until 20 years or 30 years ago, and then it became a resource. So mm -hmm. just because people didn't, didn't simply look at it as a nuisance mm -hmm. to be thrown away, but mm -hmm. they looked into it as a possibility. possibility. Mm -hmm. And may I ask you something about uh, connect, uh, connection of these two uh, possibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, uh, as, you, as you said, uh, shouldn't alter the, uh, the description of a microsystem, mm -hmm. uh, rather the description of a macro mm -hmm. microsystem. Mm -hmm. The other one seems instead to be um, for all mm -hmm. microsystems and macrosystems. Mm -hmm. And so they are not uh, equivalent. In a sense, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. Am I right? I would say so. Yes. So I mean, many worlds interpretation says that basically you don't even need to worry about uh, distinguishing between micro and macro. It says that it applies to the whatever the system that you study, and the system remains in a superposition of of the possible outcomes, and it's only within the branches within that you have the subjective experience of having a localized particle. Okay, to, mm -hmm. to, uh, the good connection to this, uh, to what you just said. Mm -hmm. When I see the uh, spots on the screen, mm -hmm. which are an interference pattern, mm -hmm. in, uh, from the many world interpretation, what, what, uh, what would the interpretation be from that point of view? So I would say, uh, so the many worlds just says that the universe globally is in a superposition of five different worlds, let's say. One world where you would have a spot. Okay, but then when I see, when me in one universe, see, I, 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 look, I look at the screen, what yeah. I'm looking at, and the superposition of the five. No, you are within one of the worlds. But if I see the other spots? No, so, spot okay, so then, so let's say you, you do the experiment once, okay? So uh -huh. now you, you have five different worlds, but you are within one of the worlds. Now you do the experiment again. And you so then, one. no. So it's like the branches of the tree. So now again, this branch would branch out into five more branches, and then you just shift. So now, let's say you saw the electron at position two. You do the experiment again. Now there are again five branches coming out of this branch, which would be the second measurement being at two, one, zero, minus one, and minus two, and then you basically would shift to one of the five branches coming out of this branch, where you see uh, two and two and zero, or two and minus one. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, this is my understanding. Thank you very much. Are there other questions or comments? If not, Anirudh, thank you. Thank you. Yes.